Coach in the fight here, talking about honoring thy father and thy mother. Why it's important. What happens if you don't? I'm going to give you a prime example. And I'm going to give it a feeble attempt to honor my mother and father as a last attempt effort to save my life. Um, we've been talking about doing videos like these. I'm going to um, hide the numbers. So I hope, hopefully this is going to be short. Um, I'm just now thinking I could have, would have, should have threw the Bible verses up there, and I'll try to do so for um, the future videos now that, I'm th now that I remember I have that power. Um, everybody hasn't woken up here either. But I wanted to tell you guys why I think that I personally am going to go away in this event that people call the rapture, why people like me in general will die in these first events. Why you people will be wondering, they say, well, why did coach in the fight die? I think, I, I think I know why that I'm looking over there and the light is literally shining on my grave right now. I'm sitting by the altar. And this is what prompted me to start this video right now. Cause it wasn't even that close. It's almost, almost dead on it. Now I'm sitting by the altar facing to the three degrees towards the temple, three degrees. And I'm looking over at the spot. It's fading now, so I better talk fast. I'm looking over at the spot where I told my kids that I wanted to be buried. And the sun, the sun has been shining through the trees on that spot ever since I started trying to make this video. I mean, it's fading off now. <sighs> and this is prompt based on something that happened last night. I called my mother after all of these events that's going on. This is not a drill. I called my mother. Now that all of this is going on, because I'm at war, and I wanted to see, you know, I'm, and I ain't finished calling. I want to know who, who are the friends and who are the foes. Now, long story short, as it turns out, I can't really honor my mother on the telephone because of how bad I was as a child and things I did as a child, even had so much resentment that, and it ain't my mom's fault, I'm the one. I was the one that had to come here, you know. My mama was, she told me that she was 15 years old. And I'm jumping a little ahead, but I'm gonna roll with it. My mama tells me she was 15 years old when she conceived me because yeah, I'm calculating math. I'm like, you about 16 when you have it. So, yeah, I guess that's right, Mom. Her mother had died when she was 12. And my sister, or my mama, sister mama, um, has, if I'm not mistaken, 12 siblings, all by this mother who died. When my mother was 12. And my mother's in the middle group. She's one of the older ones, if you know what I mean. So you can imagine. And then when she she talks about her grandmother who raised her and and my grandmother. It was an awesome lady too. But I'm sitting here remembering just now that that lady had 12 kids of her own. Could you imagine this house? Anyway, so my daddy, he has a gambling habit. We're going to get to him in a minute because we're going to honor him too. And so my mama has to do this struggling kind of stuff to survive. You know, we went down to the train tracks because we needed oil. And I'm going to tell you, it's a whole lot of stealing in this story. But, hey, it's a time to steal. And when we were cold in that house, Me and my mom went on my first secret op mission. She taught me, she taught me well that all these big locomotives, son, 
that's here running up and down carrying all this coal that we need to put in this fire, but we can't yet afford when they stop. You see this little flap right here has a bunch of oil in it. Let's put some in this bucket and take it home and get some heat going. My mom was no joke, y'all. Me and this lady walked the creeks looking for some weed called watercress. My grandma didn't even know what it was. We had to have something to eat. We walked the creeks, we parked, we went up, she drove our car. My mom don't say nothing. She, she don't, she, when she on a secret, I miss you. She's silent. You do not what's, know what's finna happen. Well, my mom will get quiet, and she usually is, unless she mad. <sighs> or whatever. No, you riding along, bumping to the little radio station. All of a sudden, the car stops, and you're like, oh, here we go. Door pop. You know what time it is. You better be standing in attention when she goes. She go when she turn around. She go look at look at you eyeball to eyeball. Them secret signals coming in. Cause when she take a left, you better go left, or better go right to stay with her. Because when she's head down that hill, and if you ain't close enough behind, you might get lost. Cause we gotta go down the hill, cross the tracks, to the creek. Where the watercress go? Cause we ain't got nothing to eat. I'm picking on my dad now. I told you I'm gonna get to him. Mm -hmm. I'm get good then. Yeah, I mean, I wonder where half this stuff come from. I'm gonna have this stuff I was born with. Mm -hmm. I did with my DNA. I ain't picking on my daddy. I'm talking about I'm honoring my mom and what she had to do for me to eat. Me and my sister. I'm going to tell y'all these funny stories. Get ready to laugh. I'm sad, but you should be laughing. Watch this. My mama's so smooth. I told you it's going to be a lot of stealing. It's a lot of stealing. <sighs> my, my mama, through stealing, taught me not to steal. My daddy, through gambling, taught me not to gamble. We're going to get to all that. Honoring my parents is a last feeble attempt to keep myself here on this planet. Because if you don't honor your parent, you're going away. I found myself hard to honor my mother last night, and I woke up looking at my grave with the light shining on it as a swift reminder, son. And that is part of the Ten Commandments to honor your parent. And I'm not, and don't, please. She had to do what she had to do. And when I ain't had no shoe, this lady goes into the department store, right? Me and her, we on secret out mission. We go every time I say secret out mission, we about to steal something. We go into the, we go into the, to the store, right? I got on my little shoes, what you would call. You wouldn't call them shoes. I call them shoes. She didn't call them shoes. Anyway, we go into the store, right? I'm happy as I don't know what I'm about to get some shoes. This pig about to go off. He about to get some shoes. We go in, we sit there, we trying on this pair, we trying on that pair. Finally, I get the pair of mom. She happy, I'm happy, we're excited, right? I start, she said, yeah, go ahead, take, like, taste, lace them up, right? <laughs> Look how slick my mom is. She said, go ahead, lace. And I'm making, I'm ad-libbing to make the story a little bit funny and, and actually understand it from my perspective, not reality, from what me as like a six-year-old kid, right? So I'm happily tying up what I think gonna be my new shoes. Look up, my mom, gone. What? Gone, shorty, I'm all over the store. Where my mom? I found my mom half a block away walking. Now think about that for how slick is that, shorty? What they gonna do to a six-year-old kid can't find his mama? Hey, I used that trick too. Again, when I got caught stealing a candy bar about five years later. A lady came at the store and grabbed me and said, hey, where you going? I said, you see my mama? And she looked around for my mama, and when she looked back for me again, I was gone. I told you, my mama taught me well, because she had to. My daddy, let me, let me just mix it up. <sighs> no, I don't know if I could do that. We're going to do it one at a time, in case one of them listen, they don't want to hear about the other one. 
My mama at the um when I was about thirteen gave me a car. My grandmother was off. Oh, I mean a real life car, and I already knew how to drive. My daddy taught me that. And so they knew what was fitting to happen. Me, young 13-year-old in the hills of West Virginia, the most dangerous roads in the highway, where they say, where the motto is, if you can drive here, you can drive anywhere. With this, I think it was a Nova. Y'all hear me, boys? My mama gave me a Nova at 13 years old. <laughs> to this day, I love the race cars. My, my, aunt, my grandma had to take her to the hospital the other day. I said, you want me to take your car or mine? If that lady had said her car, or if she said my car, It have been a fun day, but she said, oh, old car, ain't got no, need some work. Your car needs some work. Why is it shaking? Why well, want to get up to 80 miles per hour when I mash it straight to the floor? What's wrong with your car, lady? I love the race, and my mama gave me a Nova. It wasn't a Nova. I mean, it, it was something. It was a car. And I was going to kill myself in it. But she was generous like that. Praise our father in heaven. I had a grandma that could actually see my house from across the highway. Yeah, I wouldn't believe how, how, how this place is. Oh, but anyway, I would say almost a half a mile away across the uh, creek, the rank train tracks, the uh, road, the church, back up the hill, about a half a mile away. If my, my, my grandma wanted to, she could take some binoculars and look through my window and see if I was sleeping or not. Just the way it, just the way it was. So she sat there and looked at the car in the yard, sitting on her porch going, what's that, son? Oh, that's my new car, Grandma. OK. I never got to drive it. Anyway. And that's my fault for running my mouth. She probably said something like that, probably told me that, too. Got my bike, so my mom said, you better go down there and get that bike, boy. I said, oh, come on, I get it. She said, you better go down and get that bike, boy. Okay, mom, but it's gone. Mm -hmm. My mom hunt that bike down. We stood there. We went all the way to the court. If it wasn't for such a corrupt, corrupt, corrupt court system, I would have got my bike back, me and my mama. We went on a not-so-secret op mission, and she hunted that bike down. Guess what she found it at, y'all? Guess what we found it at, y'all, me and my mom? Brand new red bike that I got for Christmas. <sighs> we found the dude in the fire department. I'm gonna talk slow so you can hear me now. We found the dude in the fire department scratching off the serial number. We went right next door and said, hey, they got my bike in. And they came over there and said, we can't tell because it ain't got no serial number on it. And my mama walked back home. My mama taught me a lot of lessons. She's just a little mad at me right now and she's fussing and she won't let me say I'm sorry for anything I did and I am sorry for everything I did. And that's why I'm gonna die because I can't honor her, because I can't tell her. You call her on the phone and it's like, Dot, 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 explanation point. Let's move on. <sighs> she can't say nothing now. She can't say, oh, but you did this, and oh, but you said that. Oh, I might have, Mom, but I still love you. I still do anything for you. Then I show you that the last time I came to your house, I honored you by doing what the Bible says and repairing everything. But we ain't talking about me. No, 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 sure. No, I'm the bad boy who can't keep his mouth closed. And my mama had to tolerate that when I was growing up because I couldn't keep my mouth closed then either. And my mama had to tolerate that and raise me. And guys, if she didn't, you wouldn't be listening today. For my mama, you wouldn't be listening at all.
but they don't understand my mama and I, we, my, and my sister and my dad, we go a little bit harder than everybody else. Regular people get around us and back up because they think something about to happen. You know what's about to happen? One of us about to get tired. And they're going to say, oh, we're going to pick this up later. And they're going to say, love you, son. And I'm going to say, love you, mom. And they're going to say, you still coming to dinner? And I'm going to say, yeah, mom. And all that kind of stuff. And these folks like, what just happened here? We Look, man. Some people have to be born a little tougher and born in a little. I mean, if you got a nice little household and y'all sit around the table. Mm. Hmm. My mom is beautiful. Check this out. Funny story, right? Images, images, funny story, right? So they never had a picture of my grandmother, the lady that died at 12 years old. They were like, nobody ever got a picture. Nobody got a picture, da, 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 no, the picture, da, 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 da. But I'm doing a family history, and I find them old, old aunties. Got all them old, old photo albums that they don't let nobody see because they know every time somebody look at the picture, a picture comes up missing. But I gain a trust, and she showed me, and what do you know? There's a picture of my grandmother that don't nobody know exists. Me being the salesman I am, I go to Walmart. Yes, sir. She lets me have it. I make a copy of it. Bring it back to her. Gracefully gives it back to her. She, she takes it way back upstairs, which I didn't even know existed in this lady's house. But then I proceeded to put the picture on the thing, right, because it's holding a baby. And so I sent it to both my mama and my auntie because it's only possible chances. And I said, is this you? Just to start a little bit of mess and it worked because they had a little debate. It's got to be me because look at this. It's got to be me because look at this. But well, mind you, no one, neither one of them, both of them would have been this three-month-old baby. So neither one of them could have actually remembered what she looked like or what they looked like. But you'd imagine these two 70-year-old women, how old they are, sitting there looking at this picture of them, maybe them, could be their sister. There's a two- or three-month-old baby and a mother that they ain't seen since they was 12 years old. They trying to figure out which one of them is which. Yeah, I know how to drop bombs. Kind of like it. But anyway, back in the idolatrous days. <clears throat> Beautiful picture. If you did my mama, but you don't know my mama. Boy, my, anyway, that's what pictures are for. Because that ain't my grandma. Anyway, we ranting now. Okay, let's get back on the track. Honor my mother. So, guess what she did after 14, y'all? This lady moves from the poorest country in the United, poorest county in the United States to Washington, D.C. Been there ever since. Can't tell you all, you, all her business because she basically hit the lottery on real estate. Anyway. So she goes to D.C. and now she on a secret ops mission. My mama, beautiful as she is, literally kidnapped me and my sister from school. Now, without my mama, I don't understand secret op missions, so I'm a little bit scared. So when my, when my mama sees me as an op, meaning somebody that she can't be trusted, I'm highly confused. So this lady that got me in the car thinking that we're going to buy some tennis shoes. It took me about two, maybe three hours before we stopped at a rest stop and I got me a map and figured out, nah, we ain't going to get no shoes, man. But anyway, so that's how I cursed myself because when my dad came to kidnap me back, I said, no, nah, dad, I won't be returning to the country. I like this city life. And therein lies the curse of the Levi. But anyway, but in doing so, she opened up a lot of work, a lot of stuff for me that I would have never seen there in D.C., which is equivalent to live, living in Egypt, based on my own personal testimony. D.C. may be Egypt because that's kind of where I grew up in the streets of D.C. I kind of consider that more my home and my hometown because I actually have to grow up. I didn't really have to grow up in my hometown. Also, my homie still ain't growed up yet. But in D.C., 
He kind of grow up fast. But my mama, she, she, she always did stuff. She always had to do stuff and she was always she was prepared to do stuff for our survival, which is typical of any woman. That's kind of how they are built. My mom was just one of the best. She had to raise me. Could you imagine raising me? I'm just like I am now. And that's part of what I, what I did wrong. She says I tried to tell her what to do when I was a child. I'm like, really? Mm, everything's a parable. I don't dishonor my parents. She says I she says I dishonor her by acting like a daddy and telling her what to do. Yeah. Back in the days when I used to try to evangelize my mom. The thing about that, guys, this the stain never go away. When you come into a person's house and you convince them that they're doing wrong, when you leave, every time they do that wrong, they're gonna think of you. And they're gonna resent you for it. If you come in my house and I got a picture of a bologna sandwich on my wall and you with your new scripture that I ain't never heard of convince me that that bologna sandwich on that wall is wrong and you leave, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to contemplate the idea I'm not gonna take it down. Now, so what you have essentially done is give me the option. Am I gonna believe you? You may not know what you're talking about. Or am I actively right now about to declare myself a op of our Father in heaven? Because what I understand, he don't like that bologna sandwich on that wall. And I kind of like that bologna sandwich on the wall. And you know what? My mama gave you that bologna sandwich at the mall. And I don't believe that dude anyway. So until I figure out what's going on, you know what? I'm a halfway op of our Father now. And I did that. You do that every time. It wasn't a bologna sandwich, though. It was not a bologna sandwich. And I actually took them all the way off the wall. She'll never find them again. I'm that dude. So could you imagine raising that dude? Well, she did. She did a good job of it. I needed a calculator one day for school. Calculator cost $90. That lady loved the thrift store. But everybody else did too, which means her and I cut a deal. I would stand in line for three hours so she can get a big screen TV on Christmas sales something or whatever. I got my I got my calculator though. My mom don't play. When I came back from the army and she allowed me to stay in her house because she was about to hit this real estate lottery thing, so she didn't really need the house like that. But she wanted me to um, go to work. I'm like, Mom, I'm on a GI Bill. I go to college, and I work for the Student Support Center. She's like, no, nah, ain't none of them jobs to me, so. <laughs> I still had to go to CBS and stock shelves at night just so I had a job. She didn't care if I had money. If she thought we were supposed to have jobs, college ain't no job. <sighs> Some of this don't sound like honor, but you like, you got to understand where these people coming from, man. These people have been set up. The baby boomers, they in trouble. The solid generation introduced these people to TV and pretty much made them sit there and watch it. You got you to gotta cut them some slack a little bit. It was this X, uh, what is it, Generation X to come to kick the doors in for them. They were doing a good job. You gotta cut them guys some slack. <sighs> because in the end, we all make mistakes and we all gonna do what we have to do to survive. Self-preservation ain't no joke. So don't never tell nobody you won't steal. You lying. <laughs> don't bring demons on yourself. Don't never tell nobody that you won't steal. The only reason why you don't steal is because you don't have to. feel blessed and go do charity for somebody that has to.
be that person that when they when you want to catch them shoplifting, don't point your finger and wag. Go buy it for them. Convince the cop to let them go. Take it with them. Here, here go extra. Here go extra. I'll buy two. Let them go. Especially with some food. For me to be like this, I had to be I had to be raised in that house, so I don't I don't zip my mama for nothing. My mom ain't did no wrong as far as I'm concerned. She ain't did nothing wrong. Maybe not with my butt enough. Yeah, with that bike I lost the red the, the day I lost the red bike, she should have whipped my ad, my ad Alabama. She should have whipped my Alabama ten seconds after I ain't turned toward the door. Maybe I would have had my bike. That's all right. She was gentle. She didn't. She didn't whoop me like that. I got a butt whooping. Everybody knew I deserved it. How you gonna shoot the man windows out? Cause it was behind the tree. I did. How did I know physics? I ain't been to engineering school yet. I did to some of the dumbest stuff. See, I didn't have a. I didn't have a cloven hoof growing up, so I didn't know the difference between right and wrong. So I did whatever I wanted. The only difference I'd still do, but the only difference is now I know that I got a cloven hook, so I don't want to do no wrong. But you could imagine a kid that was fearless, a pre-engineer. I was the guy that like could, when, when her radio would break, I would straight up take the screwdriver, open it up and fix it and give it back to her. Wash machines, all kinds of stuff. But they say the neck in engineering school, we call it the neck. I had a neck as a kid. But I ain't using it for good. I'm just doing stuff. So I'm doing stuff and I know how to do stuff, is what I'm trying to say. I ain't just no regular kid with a hammer doing stuff. Mm -mm, I may go into your whole VCR and change something around for you. And I'm fearless, which means I will. I have a high tolerance for pain. Which means it's gonna take a lot to convince me not to do it again. I think I know everything, because I am who I am. I was built for this from day one. Some of us come out like this. What else? And this lady had to raise me, and she did. I mean, I'm here, ain't I? I bet you what. She's a little bit wavy now because of these spirits that's on the world. I can't fault her for that. If you understand how this all works, I'm probably part of the problem, reason why it's like that. My mom was a high school dropout. She dropped out of school because of me. But then she went back and got a GED and went on to college. Graduated with honors. As a clear demonstration for me, he setting the path first one in anybody. Daddy saw her family to do it. And I watched to do it. I said, oh, maybe we can do something besides go to the military. She used to put books in my hand. When I was a kid, this lady sat down. I, I, might, I, I could do the math. I think I was about in the seventh grade. This lady sat down, like I be telling y'all to do. You gotta sit your kids down. You gotta lift the book down. You gotta literally read it to them. They're not gonna read it to them themselves. Guess where I got that from? Out of the blue, this lady shows up with a book, lays it on her bed, me and her living on his bed, about to get all into it. And this lady read me. And you go Google this. Dante's Inferno. Those who my, those who know that book, now nah, know where how I came like this. I'm gonna tell you guys, my mama ain't no reader. She don't read. And this is the first book this lady that ever cracked for me. I ain't heard about no bedtime stories. The first book this lady cracked for me, call herself on edify me, Lord. Dante's Inferno. And she put some other books in my hand too. 
Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. You better get buy that one. Read it. Buy two copies, one for you and one for the spouse. It's half your problem will be solved in that book. That's who my mama is. And she confused like everybody else's mama. But that don't mean she doesn't deserve honor. And I do honor my mama. God, you guys don't know, man. I honor everybody. I try to. This is my channel. Even these people that came here in my place, I, I tell you how beautiful they were and how clean they were and how neat they were and all this stuff. Yeah, I honor them. Beautiful people. They just made a mistake. I ain't got no problem honoring people. I know what happens when you don't. But when I call and say, hey, ma. Like, right. oh son. I'm like, love you, ma. She's like, well, you used to didn't, son. It reminds you what you did. I'm like, no, nah, ma. She's like, yeah, anyway, da 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 da. So therein why that's why I'm that's why people like me going. You know? Now, let's switch to my dad before I get mad. I'm trying to think of anything else with my mom. Oh, beautiful lady. Oh, she worked for the airline. She retired airline. And so she had me on a plane where I could fly from here to here. I told you guys one year, I was like, if you got a church, I can come out there and see you. I literally could fly anywhere in the world. Cause, just cause my mom worked for the airline. I may have to wait. I may, it may take me a little longer. Give me. It may take me a little longer to uh, get my next flight, but I ain't paying nothing. It's free. I can wait here all day. Act this in a nice snack bar over there. You know what I mean? Shoot, don't let me be in a place like Las Vegas Airport. I might try to gamble once or twice. <sighs> and she shares it with the whole family, like, you next. Because <laughs> you're supposed to have your husband on there and all that kind of stuff, but dot, dot, dot. And so she'll share it with me or whoever. I think I'm up next. I might. I told her I wanted to be. <laughs> Man, my, one of my daughters, but I understand. Which means I could literally fly to airport like my own personal taxi. Where you want to go next? Anywhere United want to go? Wherever y'all going? I, how about I ain't got no passport, so let's just, you know, where can I go without a passport? Literally. I could just walk up to the ticket counter. Where this flight going? Oh, we're going to the Bahamas. I need a passport? <laughs> Literally, like, yo, you hear me now? Punching my mama's phone, punching my mama's name. She did it on purpose. That was her plan in life. That was her life plan to, to retire for them, from that place just so she could do it, just so she could have this privilege, just so her son, used to in the past and will one day in the future, <sighs> be able to walk in the airport and say, yes, I'm here. Who are you? I am coaching a fight. We don't know you. I know. I know. Calm down. Calm down. My lovely mother is... Oh, you ain't got to say no more. Son, come in, sir. I'm sorry. Come on in. Where would you like to go today? I ain't decided yet. Where that one going? I was going to Hawaii. I don't need no passport, do I? No. All right, we'll come back to that one. Where that one going? Where that one going? I can't find nobody else. I can literally... Walk back to the ticket lady while y'all listen. Yeah, look, you done paid your four thousand dollars or whatever you paid to ride in first class. Watch this here. If I put on a suit and a tie and look like I'm a businessman, I'm gonna walk while you sitting there waiting. I'm gonna walk up to the ticket counter lady and say, you know what? I don't want to go to D.C. I want to go to Hawaii for a few days, and she'll say, okay, sir, hold on. And she would say, literally, dot, 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 and look. And I, when I look up on that board, my name will going to magically appear up on that board, y'all. In a number. And because my mother was such a high of a rank, all them other people that thought they was finna go now realize that their flight plans may be in jeopardy only because I showed up and said, you know what, I want to go see what Hawaii looked like, y'all. And then that lady is going to put me in a system. She's going to call me back up. And she's going to say, sir, we was able to get you in. No, she's going to say, sir, we, we, we probably ain't going to be able to get you in. There's so many people on this flight. We might not be able to get you in. And I'm going to say, okay, ma'am, 
I'm going to wait. But what happens if it's not? What if the, what if the flight is empty? Guess what's fitting to happen? Because I got a suit on and there's empty seats in first class. These people, yo, are about to take me straight to first class and set me down. And they about to serve me wine, anything I want. Food that you don't even get to see back there. We paid all this money for this ticket. You don't even get to see the food I'm eating. I ain't even reached in my pocket to show nothing but my identification to show that I'm related to this woman. She did it on purpose, just for that, just for that day, just for this day. She, she came down to visit guys. Guess what she came? I, I said about a thought about this. And this is funny, y'all gonna laugh. She does this to the whole family. She talked about how she did it before. And she asked, she said, did y'all get that package I sent? He was like, yeah, we got it and all this. She's like, y'all sent it all over the data, and da, da, da. And people start asking before I get it, da, da, da. I said, you know, I'm gonna buy it again. And I, you know what, I'm gonna go buy it again. Do you know this package arrived when she got here? And it took me a week to realize, you know what she did? She just jumped on a plane because she was going to leave the next day. She just jumped on a plane to come down here to see her package arrive and to make sure it got here and see what we did with it. Do you know what was in the package, y'all? If you breastfeed, you're going to drop that baby. She came down here to personally, she 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 got you nice. She retired now. She don't work for them no more. She didn't invoke the power of the United Airlines to Air Force 38 herself in here to escort a big box of toilet paper. You hear me? It's my mama, yo. 90 rolls of toilet paper. She made sure she saw where they went before she got back on that plane and went back home. You, you feel me where I'm coming from, y'all? This my mama, you ain't got to my daddy yet. <laughs> you ain't got to my daddy yet. Well, we went to Vegas to see my see my uh uh granddaughter. Hey, I'm going. She paid for the ticket in the first place. That's how we got me and my wife got there. And then she just came for grins and giggles. I see what's going on, G. Vegas. Oh, look the grandbaby. Here, I'll splash you some gifts. Let me sprout my wings and fly on back to modern day Egypt. Calculated, y'all. She did it on purpose. She told us she was gonna do it. She told us when she was gonna do it. Look, she told us she did it based on my child's birthday. She said, she told him, when you turn a certain age, I'm going to retire. And she did everything she said she was going to do. And, that's, and I grew up in a house where you do everything you say you're going to do. If you say you're going to do it, my mama say you're going to do it. She gonna, if she says she's going to do it, she's she going to do it. If you don't like what she says she's going to do, you better move. You better get out the way. You better stop doing what you're doing. Because <sighs> she, She, she like me. You hear parents telling, I'm going to snatch it out of you. Oh, I'm, no, I'm going to wring your neck off. You ain't going to hear my mama say nothing out of her mouth like that. She do, you better spout like a chicken and cock a doo doo your butt on somewhere else. We're going to see what a, a human do when you wring his neck off like a chicken. Do he stay in a circle too? I think he do. That's my guess. He's going to stay right there in that circle and he ain't going to come out. Trying to think, I'm, I'm stalling I'm trying to think of what else. My mom did so much stuff. Just cause she could, just cause she knew she could. Mama's name was Patsy. They grew up calling this lady Patsy. And think about that, y'all. This lady was in college when she looked up what the word meant. Call a pat now. <clears throat> Except me when I get angry. But that's what it takes to, to raise a person like me. You, I can't be raised in a normal household. 
Could you imagine what happened if the father dropped me in a regular old normal house? How would I turn out? Who gonna get broke? Them on me. Somebody gonna get broke. Them on me. I didn't break my mama. Never came close. Scared a life out of me if I even thought I, I might accidentally dent her a little bit. Now my dad. Now, this dude, I believe that if I wanted to, I could move my whole family to West Virginia, back to the county where I'm from. And I could devise a plan. It may take a meeting or two, a little bit of coaxing. But I could devise a plan to take over the whole county. Is there a coach going in there with guns? Oh yeah, no, I'm going in there with arrows. You gotta understand, I'm a junior. The head of our security on this place is a third. Our IT guy, our engineer, I slid his name in there. Two, I slid, yeah, so it's in there in a middle name. So you could do that. So you have four people who technically have this man's name on a birth certificate, right? But watch this, my dad, is known by everybody in the county. He, he was the meter reader back when they had to meet, read your meter. They don't read your meter now. They use computers and sensors and stuff. You never see this dude. But back when I was in high school and I played hooky, and my, or my dad had to do something, it was illegal for me to ride in his truck. So I would have to get down in the floorboard of the truck and he would pull up at the, at the, at the neighborhood and he would get out there and he would walk house to house, not door to door but pole to pole. And he would literally have to stand there at your light pole, that little thing out that ticket. And we would have to read those numbers and write them on your card. They would have to go take them and turn them in so we'd find out how much your bill was. This man knew everybody in the county. He had to go to everybody's house. He worked there for, he retired there. And they all loved him and they all respected him. Friend, and they still do, friend and foe. You hear me now? Friend and foe. Even his enemies love him. They don't know what else to do with him. Find a reason not to like him, not gonna last long. He, he what? That's, that's. <laughs> this dude played golf with the white folks. He played bingo with the old folks. He played poker with the, with the uh, young folks. He played pool with the, I mean, this dude is everywhere. And everybody loved him. When I went up there to visit, right? I didn't get to see it for myself. But some at the bingo hall, some old lady done got in the spirit uh, because it's her birthday or whatever. And then 90 something, they say she's almost 100 dancing with my daddy. White lady now. He don't even know who she is, really. I mean, they buddies, they, they bingos together. Just, but, they, but it ain't like that. You know, they don't sit at the same table. But there they are dancing for this lady on her birthday in the whole uh, place in the bingo hall and everybody cheering. And nobody's surprised. Why? Because that's my daddy. That's what he do. That's what he do. When I come in, oh, you're going to meet everybody. Do you remember this lady? Oh, I remember. And you, you know you're supposed to because you grew up with this lady all the time. And the one past her house and all of this. And they remember you because of your dad. So I'm like, you know what? I can go in here. Okay, we're going to hatch a list. You're going to be mayor. You're going to be dad. You're going to be superintendent. You're going to be this. You're going to be that. Probate, this, that, and the other. That's f including myself. That's five. And him, if he'll participate. That's five people that share the same name of the most popular man in the county, most popular and loved. And now I could take over the whole county just cause I got the man's name. Just cause I share his name. I could take over the county. The next county too, he moved. It may be a little harder. They don't know him that well. Everywhere he go. And his brothers, 
you talk about men folk. Ah, these men solid as rock. And see, my dad, he 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 can do it. He can play basketball. He can play poker. He can uh, he, I mean, he do all over the place. Golf. I mean, he's everything. Tennis. I'm a tennis. Yeah, he get you on the tennis court. He'll do it. He ain't afraid. He ain't scared of nothing. One thing he don't play is chess. Guess why he don't play chess? Guess why I think he don't play chess? And I was sitting here, I was thinking about this video, thinking about my dad. I'm like, this dude get on the basketball court and drill your lights out for fun. He the dude that stand back because he's short. And he the one that stand back and just straight up drill your lights out. He from the basketball capital of the United States. Norfolk Blue Demons, well, we know basketball, and he know that he don't come in the hole with people like me. Cause I'm straight up gonna foul him at least. Mm -mm. I can't even get back there so far back there where he at, and he about to straight up drill your lights out all day. Number net, number net. Who passes him the ball? His brothers. But he don't play chess, why? I think it's because he don't like taking L's. And when it came to chess, he couldn't, he couldn't stand his brother, especially the one that taught me, the younger brother taught me. And he didn't mind hurting your feelings and then coming back and teaching you why he hurt your feelings and then giving you another lesson to see if he could do it again. I did. And I don't think my dad could stand the fact that his little brother could whoop him and do whatever he want to, pluck his pieces across the board, and he didn't like that. And I think he knows how the game is played, but I've never played a game of chess with my dad. But he has always looked over my shoulder as I destroy every opponent that step before me. Is that one? It's because I was distracted. And I wanted to let my uncle win anyway. I throw out that zero goose egg at the end. <laughs> Get a little boring. You ain't know, huh? No, it was your little brother that taught me. He taught me, the one that's deceased and passed and gone now. Yeah, he the one that did that. So my dad, I think to this day, that's why he won't, he will not play a chessboard is because he couldn't beat his brothers. Because every one of them was better than him and me too. I guess I sealed the deal when I came out, ready to pluck his piece across the board. <clears throat> my dad don't take the hell, he don't lose. He don't lose. I can imagine if I ever found my dad in a losing situation, the second he realizes a losing situation, he's going to pleasantly excuse himself and you're not going to see him no more. Not until another, another day, if you know what I mean. It's just over. Quiet and gone. And that's how you do when we're in that room talking and we're talking scriptural stuff. Ain't no debate. I know when he, I know when he heard me, he excused himself quietly. You don't see him for a while. When you come back out that room, it's a brand new day. This man saved my life, y'all. They was down here, they was on me. They was on me. Like they doing now, they sending all these attacks in here. But see, back then, they thought I was disenfranchised. I don't call in favors. I don't call in favors. Because I know I'm going to need them one day. Yeah. Oh, you guys owe me some favors, too. I don't call in no favors until I need them. I know what's, what's coming. I ain't wasting no favor on no bologna sandwich or whatever or, or nothing. But one day I needed a favor, and I called in some help. They seemed to thought I was disenfranchised, like I was the only one even saying stuff like, all this Bible stuff, that's why your family don't like you. All your Bible stuff, that's what your family don't like you. That's why they don't never come to visit you. I'm like, no, they say they live too far away. They say, I'm way down here, they don't like to drive. Uh-uh, that ain't it. That ain't it. And that Bible and this, that, uh. They was getting me. They was getting me. They almost had me. They almost had me. The Lord put it in my heart. My father in heaven, hallowed be his name, to call you daddy. I said, Dad, I need some help. I said, what you need, son? I said, I need you to come and get me. I can see your bus ticket. Da, 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 da. I know, sir. No, no, sir. No, sir. This is different. I need you to physically come and get me. He said, son, I'm on the way. I'll call you back. I did not hear from this dude for months. Like two months. I forgot. 
the whole conversation. Things are halfway got better around here. Halfway now. Got better around here. When he called, I wasn't here. And my wife answered the phone. Could you imagine my surprise when my wife wants to know why is my brother and my daddy on the way down here? I told you, they coming to get me. What you talking about? Pack my stuff, I'm leaving. What you talking about? He came in just like I knew he would, him and my brother. I wanted to let these people know I'm not disenfranchised. What I'm doing is a choice. The same way when I was homeless in D.C., I tell you I was homeless, I didn't have to be. My mother lived in C.C., my auntie lived in D.C., and I had two uh, two other aunties that lived in D.C. who wouldn't mind me sleeping on their floor, too. I walked past these. I went and, and sat lunch with these people asking me, you know you ain't got to go back there. Yeah, I know. You know you ain't got to go back there. I know, but I'm going. It was the principle of the matter. So I don't call in no favors. And when I do, when I call my dad, just like I knew it, came in like the cavalry, ready to kick in the door, ready to grab my brother and tow, pick up truck and all, ready to go. Load up the truck, son. He turned to my wife, he said, what you need? She said, I don't need nothing. She said, yeah, you do, here a few hundred dollars. Dropped it on her, took her to the store, bought her stuff, without the, the bought her whatever she want. Uh, graciously stayed an extra day because this plan is ready to go. He came on a rescue mission. He didn't even plan on brushing his teeth. That's what the brother was for, extra drivers. But no, dad, that's not the plan. This ain't a secret op mission. No, oh, you got to go visit the neighbors. Let's go talk to them, dad. Go on up there. You remember when you came down for graduation and they all praised me and what I was doing a great job, you know, when I'm graduating and all this, that, that, that. Go talk to them now, dad. Go up there. And he did. Sat right there in their house. They praised me. Oh, he hit this. He did it. I'm telling that crap now. Anyway, da 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 da. He did exactly what I expected a military trained professional to do. He planned his art mission secretly. Now, that one I told you in DC when he came to rescue me too, that was secret. That joker met me when I got off the school bus. When I got off the school bus, him and I think two of my uncles were standing there in a big van looking like uh, the 18, in a straight up 18 van. My grandma had an 18 look when I'm shaped 18. It didn't have the um, colors on it, but that's the shape of it. And when I jumped off the bus, and just like the damn 18, the door rolled open, and there was my dad and two of my uncles ready to pop. All military now. These military men on secret op missions to get me. Y'all understand? Man, come on. Some people, some people have to be trained for this kind of stuff. I never knew he was coming. My sister was already in the car. He had already scooped her from her school. He was just waiting for me to get off my bus. And he was sitting there like the 18, just waiting. Me, not, not I ain't got a clue what's going on. About to go in here and get my lesson. Babylon, Egypt. I'm in D.C., baby. Chilling, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you don't know. These men don't play. And he, and he looked me in the face, they came to get me, said, I come to get you. I said, Dad, I don't want to go. And that man, Christ, my sister said, he cried all the way back down the road. My sister said, he cried all the way back down the road. <sighs> I honest, my parents, it's just hard to do it to their face. You gotta honor your parent and the seed. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. You know, my true colors gotta come out. You know, all the, the, the title of this video, Why Coaching the Fight is Going to Hell, is what it should have said. And honor the parent thing. It, it hit me, guys. If you just tune in, I tried to call my mama last night, and I woke up looking at my grave site, and it dawned on me. 
I could go away for this. Out of all the stuff I done did, because it's so hard for me to honor my parents. Let me think about my, oh, 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 oh. We ain't, we ain't got to that part. It's part three. Still think about my dad. <sighs> he is he is way more responsible. Well, no, no, no. Nobody's responsible for the way I turned out. That's um, my father's plan. But, you know, for me to get like this, certain things had to happen. So he had a lot of play and a lot of stuff that I'm not going to mention because I can't find a way to honor him in it. Oh, like I told you, he had a gambling habit. Guess I, he taught me not to gamble. See, I don't gamble. That like coach I heard you talk about Texas Hold'em. Texas Hold'em is not gambling. If you don't know, get some cards. I'll show you. Get a few pennies or rocks or whatever. I'll teach you in about whatever, however long you want to take. The Texas Hold'em is not gambling at all. It's calculated, way calculated, not only on a mathematical level, but a human level. You have to read the paper, too. I love that game. And if it wasn't for my daddy, I would be, I would be probably gambling right now because my, all of my family, they, that's all they did. My grandma, all of my uncles and on that side of the family would just sit around the big table. That's all they did. What else was they going to do? Nobody really watched TV and all of that. And all they to do is sit around and play cards. And they'd always start off nice playing spades. And us kids would want to join in. They'd let us every once in a while, but then it turned into poker. And the coins would come out and we'd go play. And so when I started getting a little older and start looking at that table and start wondering about my own little pennies. Yeah, hey, I'm about to get in here with my uncles and aunties. Let me tell y'all, I went to Las Vegas one time. I, went, oh, I actually went to Vegas twice. The first time I won, I was a calculated effort to, to come back to say I won in Vegas. Really, I won $40. Once I got my $40, it was over. Get on the plane, let's go home. Second time, I'm, I'm gonna get a little bit out there. And this lady sat at this table and picked me apart. This old little, short little Italian lady with all her big broody looking Italian sons or nephews or whoever these were. It looked like I was sitting at the table with the mafia. But it was the old little lady that took me to the clinic and reminded me of my auntie. And I'm thinking, you pretty slick lady. You pretty, I would tie you, I would put you again head to head with my auntie. And I would love, I would pay, I would, I would videotape, you know, the cards or whatever, so people could see, because this going, you two are, you two are good. But, one thing, my auntie got, got way better than you, because she's a little bit slicker, I would think. Or maybe not, maybe y'all equal as far as your, your poker skills. But, my auntie wouldn't have hurt your feelings. She'd have told you she was going to do it before she did it. You wouldn't have been surprised. And then when she gracefully took your money and realized you ain't had none left, guess what she'd have did? She'd have dug in her big fat pocketbook with all this extra money. She'd have set it up on the table. So shang, shang, it'd, it'd bounce the stuff you drink with a splashed. And then she'd have dig in there and she'd have gave you some more money. And then she'd have took it back. And she'd have sat there all night doing that for you and teaching you and teaching you. So when you meet up with the little Italian lady that you think is slick and smooth and like, yeah. They only get you once. They only get you once. That's her. That's my daddy's older sister. I can honor her too. I can honor her on a higher level. She taught me on a higher level. Higher level, but I'm gonna save that for her video. I don't think well, it's just outstanding style. It's outstanding. You got it. when when he came and got me, he scooped me up, took me to his house. I said, Dad, let me explain. He said, Nope, I don't want to hear it. And we never did talk about it. And I stayed in that man's house as long as I wanted to. Like I was a fly on the wall. Never, never asked me to do nothing, never tell me to do nothing until he found out it was time to go. He's like, oh, I thought you was going to stay longer. Oh, I do have this list. And we bust it out real quick. Fix that. That's what you do when you go to your parents' house. You fix everything. Everything is broke. You fix it. You clean it. You move it. You repair it. Everything, you change the oil. You fix the tires. Everything. That's what you do when you go to your parents. That's what you owe your parents. So you do that. 
He just waited. He thought I was going to be there longer, guys. He, he didn't even care. He thought I was going to be there longer. I've been there for two or three weeks. And he's like, oh, you're going already? Because he was on, he was on I guess you'd call that a secret op mission, too. Saved my life. I went out there and stretched out in the mountains and braved all that fresh air. And felt myself at home. I mean, back at home. I was back at home with all my peoples. Mountain peoples. And he took care of me, fed me. Did whatever I wanted. Yeah, I sat there at this kitchen table. We didn't bother me. I mean, video after video, video after video, video after video, a bunch of them. You know, all you got to look at is like uh, 2000, uh, it might have been 2018. A lot of the videos from 2018 were shot at his kitchen table. And now it took a high speed. Whew, boy, I down here would have took an hour to upload a video that it took 30 seconds to upload up there, it seemed like. And I had power. I didn't have to worry about power issues. Like, and I ain't had to worry about cows and sheep and chickens and ducks and dogs and altars. And... <sighs> Never sat there and cranked them out until I got tired. I didn't say a word. Did so much, didn't so much as ask me to take out the trash or why I was there or how much I was going to pay rent or nothing. I told that man that my life was in jeopardy. And he said, hold on, I'll call you back. And that's the way I act. That's why I act like I come from that. Don't, 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 look, I, don't know, I don't know what kind of people y'all play with that will actually leave you on the battlefield. But I promise you, that's the prophecy. All these fake ministers out here telling you this and telling you that. Ask you what they got for you to go. Ask you if it popped off now, what is their plan for you? Ask it. Get in the comments section. Say, sir, I like your videos. I've been loving them. Listen to you for a very long time. I know you don't know me, and but I, I, I really love your videos. I've even supported you a few times, but I, 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 that's not what I want. I want to ask you a question. Me being your follower or just you know associate listening to your channel, looking for a place to get spiritual enlightenment from, I was just wondering, what is your plan for your followers? When a blue streak goes across the sky and all of the airways go dead in complete silence as we wonder what the heavens just happened. When you graciously part the airways and part your lips to tell your people what to do next, sir, what do you plan on telling them to do? Put their Alabama between their legs and kiss they you no, know, put your head between your legs and kiss your Alabama goodbye. Yeah, the prophecy they all gonna run on you. They're all going to duck and cover, and they're all going to hide to protect them own selves. It ain't about me, guys. But I'm landing on the line for you. And honor my dad. And, and, and here, here's a way I can honor my dad. Here's a way you can honor my dad. Here, you can say, your dad is cool at all, grace and all he did. But how about, since your dad ain't using that no more, how about, how about I go ahead and save my family over there? Do you hear me? I got something for you. When you call me up and say, hey, coach, I need a place to go. I'm going to say, where you at? Where you at? I'm going to find out how far you go. You know, you're going to tell me your coordinates. I'm going to calculate my closest uh, 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 refuge joint that I know about that you can get in safely until we get you to a proper place where you can start rebuilding your whole life. The, the Bible way. Ask your Barry Vanderlings if they can do that while they running their mouth. But you know what happened, y'all? Part of the reason that, that I'm going to give credit to my father in heaven for all this, too, because he didn't want to let me to the idea of buying them tax properties. And I bought too many of them. I couldn't really handle it. I ended up losing some of them. But one of them, I bet my dad wanted to stay in, the most important one. I think I might have encouraged him, like, Dad, there's something right here. But he he stayed there for all of them years. And while when I got back, when I lost it, um, when I left the industry, I didn't care about no bills. So a lot of that stuff went back on the taxes, except that house that he wanted to live in. And because he lived in that house, I still have that house. Because he lived in that house, I still have that house. He put a hole in the roof on it. You know what that means, people who know about houses. Once your roof go, your house go. He put a hole in the roof on it. And he just lived in it. 
He just lived in it. He lived in it and just lived in it. But what he did was he preserved it. Because I'm going to tell you, he told me three years ago, he said, I'm, he said, you're going to have to start paying the taxes. And you know me. Yeah, I'm going to get to it in a minute. It's the bicycle man. By the time I paid, by the time I did pay him, it's three years, three years late. And I owe $1,000. <sighs> Could you imagine if he hadn't paid those taxes for 10 years? I guess how long he stayed in that house. But the thing about that house, it sits on about a quarter eight. Well, it sits at, at the whole house, the whole property sits on 12, about 12 acres total. All mountains, all trees, nothing but mountains and trees. You got the slopey mountains and trees. They use it for, they use that part of the world, part of the country for four wheelers. It's a four wheeler resort. And so my place is on the top of a mountain. But the thing about it, I drew lots of wealth. I should just straight up give it to you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a little house on it. I was like, look, somebody could come here with their family, you know, take a shower, get cleaned up, get a little bit of rest, look up that mountain and, you know, go up there and find where they, what they can do up there. You know, by then, you know, it'd be other people that came before them and had already got the path laid out a little bit that they can, you know, have something to do. I was thinking of Levi's, you're going to go in and kick the dough in first and, you know, get the hard work done. And then the family starts showing up. It's because of my dad. Y'all got that opportunity. Still do. Send me an email. I ain't joking. I think I'm playing. I'm in the fight, yo. And love it. I love this. You wait for this war to kick off. It's one thing to be back in peacetime, uh, crunching numbers and doing paperwork and sharpening swords and all of that. Wait till they start blowing the weapons, blowing the trumpets, saying it's time to rise up and go. Them guys be so ready to go to war. My dad is a veteran, like me, if you didn't hear. Imagine all his brothers, all of his brothers, every all five of them were veterans. And his and his daddy was a veteran. I can't prove it, but I believe his granddaddy was. I'm still trying to get in there and find out. Golly. A few confusion. Dang, blue eyes don't fit in that the puzzle somehow, so I don't think it's going to be right. I did my dad's DNA. He comes from Cameroon number nine. Cameroon number nine. So... And I gave him that information as a gift, which means that everybody under his lineage know who the heavens they are and can't nobody shake them. I'm just trying to ramble on as I try to think of more stuff about my dad. Oh, let me tell you what my dad did. This dude, while my mama, she just says she flying and she going across the country. She flying here and she flying here. Guess what my dad doing? This dude about a time shit, Lord. Man, you know what people say about time shit. They everybody like, ooh, Lord. No, sir. This man bought this time shit a long time ago. And then we started to go. And it literally became a yearly family reunion. Every year, we went to Massanutten for the 4th of July. Every year, my whole family, my brother, my sister, my uncles, aunts, and whoever else wanted, my mom would show up sometime, would all show up at Massanutten. It's a, it's a resort. And do, um, on the 4th of July, watch the fireworks all that. My dad, he just laid it out for all. He, like, set it up, and everybody would come. You know, he tried that stuff the first year. Everybody got to chip in and pay the maintenance fees. And I believe I paid him. I bet I was the only one. But, of course, we messed it up the first year. We messed it up so bad, they started to throw him out. <laughs> we, messed, we left that place in such a mess. They told him that they thought about removing him from the timeshare. How about you want to you, you wanna get out of your timeshare? Invite me and my family over. <laughs> Two or three visits to that, and you, you'll be all right. Oh, we got a buyer for you. Yeah, no, we good. We good. We, good. we, we ready to close already. Before you come here again, bring them.
guys. He bought everybody, everybody that would come. And it didn't matter. If he had it, and look, we piled everywhere. Flow, ain't nobody stay nowhere else. We stay all right there in that timeshare. Lord, everywhere. My kids, they thought it was his house. The youngest ones, the twins, they literally thought it was his house. And you know how you had to think about how you have to break the news to the kid that he has adopted? I'm sitting there to contemplate the idea of breaking the news to this kid that no, son, that's not your granddaddy's house. <laughs> But by the time he found out where his daddy's house, his granddaddy's house was, he had bought a new one, so he didn't get to get the full bachelor ad thing. <laughs> so he kind he did that for us, guys. My dad did that. He preserved that for us. And if it goes down, we got a place in West Virginia we could go. I'll tell you now, Keystone, West Virginia, look it up. It's behind the store. Behind the store. I'm like, okay, I got to tell you, behind the store. Just look straight up the mountain. All that mountain is mine. All of it. All of it. All of it. All of it. The whole mountain is mine. I got out on a mountain. On a mountaintop. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, that was my dream. When I, well, even before I started this, hey, I'm, I'm going to go off on a tangent here, y'all. Praise our Father in heaven. The only thing I am missing is the helicopter. I was supposed to have a helicopter and a Humvee. I got the top of the mountain. I literally own a top of a mountain. Praise our Father in heaven. And my daddy. Blessed be his name, too. I'm only missing the Humvee and the helicopter. And I guess you guys are going to be there. Waiting for the world to change. And my daddy did that for us. And my father did that for us. And I honor both. If you're interested in the property, you don't have to live on my property. I was told not to actually turn it over to you guys outright, but there are adjacent properties that actually touch the property, if you know what I mean. When your property touches mine, you have automatic access in this. Of course, I build a fence. Well, I don't plan on building any fence. I plan on just, it'd be great as everybody had their own satellite little place where they do their own business. Nobody tell, nobody know what to do because you got your own property that you bought for a dollar. It just so happens to touch Coach and the Fights, Hill, or not Hill, Billy Homestead, have you be something else. <laughs> about 12 acres of nothing but trees, nothing but trees, apple trees, pear trees, ain't no orange trees, might not be no pear trees, I better stop lying, I know it's some cherry trees and apple trees, <laughs> nut trees, so what you do is you cut down the trees that's not beneficial and you leave the ones that's good. So you take the ones that's not beneficial and you build your house and you leave the ones that's good. So now you got a house and you got food, Lord. All you need is some workers to do it. Already provided, already set there. They got water that run out the, out the mountains. I ain't looked on it yet, but I bet I got a stream, y'all. I bet I got a mountain spring that you can go up and stick your cup on it and get the clearest, cleanest water you ever seen in your life. And it's going to be cold. It might be 85 degrees out here, but that water right there is going to be like, like it came out the refrigerator. Watch. Well, my daddy did that. I wouldn't even be able to talk about that if it wasn't for what my daddy did. I'll be talking about what we could have, would have, should have did. I'm talking about y'all coming here. <sighs> your only option. For me to help you, for me to help you. you, know, you might have some other help, you might have your own plans, but there's some people out there that can't fend for themselves and all of this. My father tells us to look out for the old ladies and the sick people and the people that can't do for themselves. And I promise you, I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. They're just slow and coming. We're already ready. Because my daddy helped me and he taught me right. He taught me to protect people. He taught me to be a man of your word. When you say you go do something, you do it. He told you when people depend on you, you do not let them down, no matter what. And you be nice about it while you do it. You be calm and you be peaceful. 
You don't be racist. You talk to the white lady just like you talk to the black lady. There ain't no difference. Not at all, so. What did he tell me last time? He said, he said, sir, it dawned on me. Do you know why your forefathers acted the way they did? I said, no, dad, but I know you about to tell me. He said, sir, it dawned on me. They had to. Well, I guess you're right. Had to do what they had to do. Don't think of anything else, y'all. He tried to teach him golf. He bought the kids golf clubs. He's hard hitting us. I, 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 come on, guys. At least go out there. And, dude, you don't understand what's going on here. This man is buying you golf clubs. <laughs> you gonna when he come back? You mean to tell me you can't find them? I can't remember, but I wish I was the dude that whipped him for that. I must didn't because I can't remember. But I will get him now. If that man do anything for you and you throw it in the dirt. <sighs> when I went to D.C., just went to his house. We was going to D.C. to see mom. But guess where we stopped first? My dad's house. Just plopped him and just, here we go. We told him to just come. He had a little chance to clean up. We didn't give him much warning. Not much. But they keep his house pretty clean. You know, we just splashed in it. Whole family. Splash. I have Stacy had a dream that when we got there, he wasn't there. And sure enough, when we got there, he wasn't there. But in her dream, it sounded like he was mad, mad at us. I was half scared. <laughs> what in the world could we have here? We done showed up unannounced. And he ain't here just like the dream said. But it worked out perfectly. He just happened to be at the bingo hall handling his business. And he came back and snapped to it, became the absolute perfect host. Too good of a host, too. Sometimes uh, our parents could be too good of a host, and that could be a problem, especially when you watch the TV on the Sabbath day. But, you know, everybody don't. I mean, they say, wait, let the wicked stay wicked. So I don't coach my dad. I don't go on my house. Look, guys, how you look like coming in here telling me something? When I go to my dad's house, and when he say the TV comes on the Sabbath day, Hey, I just turned my damn head. Go read my Bible. I don't say nothing. We may have a little meeting later on in our private. Oh, you know, we ain't supposed to. But you think I'm about to say anything? My daddy sitting there? Shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chill out, man. People, some people take life serious. No. He said, TV come on, TV come on. It's his house. Turn that thing up loud. He wants to straight up torture us, and you better slide off somewhere and handle your own Sabbath day. It's your Sabbath day. That ain't here. That ain't here. And, and, and let me tell you, let me tell you how cool my dad is, right? So part of the problem is that I try to evangelize my parents. And like, you don't tell us what to do. Yeah, I guess you're right. But they listen, especially my dad, because guess what he does on the Sabbath day? Exactly what I do. He just follow me. If he pop out the room and I'm laid on the couch, this man about to go take a nap. If I don't wash dishes, he won't wash dishes. If I don't go outside, he don't go outside. He don't know what to do, but he is. I'm watching this man. He is absolutely following everything I do. If I make a mistake, y'all, guess what he about to do? Like if I go out, I, I think I did. I think I wanted to listen to some music, so I went out in a little rental car that he had rented for me. I ain't no credit card. And I turned on the um, thing at the car to listen to the music. I bumped a little bit. And I believe before I got in that house, he was in the car headed to town. He thought I was leaving. He thought Saturday day was over. That man was ready to go. When I popped the keys of that car, he was getting, he was finding his. Up, <laughs> Saturday day over. <laughs> no, damn, I'm just listening to some music out here and listen. I didn't want to disturb you. You was resting like you were sleeping all day to me. What's going on? You sick? No, I'm good, so I'm just here and relax. All right, I hear you. Me too. I happen to be doing it on a Saturday. This is cool. I'm going to try to do this more often. 
How many parents would do that for you, y'all? That man don't believe in my that man. People don't believe in people don't believe. That man ain't been to church. That man been a, he been to more. He been to church. If you look at the ratio of the times he's been to church, funerals, not funerals, I would guess it's 10 to 1. That's where we have our reunions at. Our reunions are at funerals. That's where we go to church is funerals. That's where my family go to church is funerals. It ain't a funeral. What you going to church for? That's where the dead people go. But he raised me through it. He was a Methodist. And it's because of him that I wanted to find out why there's so many different religions in the world. Wait a minute. She say she holy and you, you know, what's the difference? And so I did a whole report just to find out the difference between my mom and my daddy. And I know now, one like the sprinkler and one like the splash. All the same stuff. He honored his mother. That man, he honored his mother. Whew. You talking, you ain't seen no man honor his mother like that man honored his mother. Look, went to die. He was the only one. She called in the room. Now they call him in the room now. She was the one. I don't know what he what she told him. Let's put the rest of us out. I want to talk to that one. Everybody knew she was going. That was the last time most of us talked to her. <laughs> and what we said was, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's the, okay. We'll send him right in for you. We don't know where she shut that door. So he's the mark one. I don't know what he marked with. He ain't told nobody. I ain't asked. You know how that go. You be want to ask, what did they say? <sighs> but he's a little softer than my mom. But the problem is when I talk to him and I try to do anything, that they don't hear me say, mama, I love you. They hear me say, My mom would be a jerk or something 30 years or 50 years ago. I got some work to do, y'all. So I do honor my parents. I love my parents. Guys, but here's the deal. I'm going to switch gears again because if I don't, I got to die. The rule is the rule. If I can't find a way to honor my parents, I got to go away. I got to die. Now, is that why people like me go? Because we think we hold so holy in this and so holy in that. We, we, we try to evangelize our parents, and now they can't even go to the bathroom without seeing that picture of their Messiah on the wall, take a third in peace. And you resent us for it? Yeah, guys, I think so. I think so. I think they'll never live it down. I think they'll never let us live it down. And so we'll never be able to honor them, not to their face. The only place we'll be able to honor them is at the grave. Is that too late? I don't know, I hope not. I hope this evil effort to keep me here. I ain't gonna do nothing to intentionally kill myself. And if I life preservation, even though I don't mind going, life of preservation ain't no joke. Talk all that junk you want to. But when you wake up and then when you go to bed at night, contemplating the idea that you may have just, just dishonored your parent. And then you wake up in the morning and a light is shining on where you put your grave site. Yeah, it takes you to another place. And these are the kind of videos I think I'm gonna start putting out, guys, because watch this. I can tell you this too. Watch what will happen to me if I actually die. Don't feel sorry for me if I go. And that's the purpose of this video. If I do perish in all of this, if I go, don't be like Coach must have the wicked. Like, no, if Coach had family problems and other issues that we didn't know about that he had to go away, particularly honoring the parent because that's one of the commandments. We have to honor our parents. So let me tell you what's fair to happen to you, Mr. Righteousness, Mr. Holiness, Mr. Tassels and, and feast days and doing everything according to the scripture, according to the way you honor it. But you can't find a way to honor your parents. Let me tell you what's getting ready to happen to you. What I think is going to happen to us. We're going to go. We're going to have to die because of the rule. rules. The rules are rules. Check this out. Because of the way it goes and the work we've done here and all the efforts we put in, we get to take all of this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding with us, right? That's key. You don't have to learn the same lesson. Once you learn the Sabbath day and the cloud of clockworks, you'll come back teaching how clockworks. That's how it works. You learn a lesson and then you come back and you learn more lessons. Well, how about now? All of us people who have been working, it's hard. 
trying to protect our families and doing everything we can do to get them across the line into the kingdom of heaven, have to now learn a lesson on how to honor your parents. Now, I want you to think for a moment. What would the lesson plan be for a person who comes from a dysfunctional home as far as the Bible is concerned? He had everything he could in life, but didn't make it because he didn't know how to honor our pain. How do you fix that? I can't see your comments, but I bet the answer is you give them an example, somebody that they can honor, somebody that you can emulate, somebody that you can stand up and say, I'm proud to say this is my mama and my daddy. Uh, uh, no, no, I understand y'all spiritual people over there. That's cool. We brothers and we cool too. We're going we to get up in a minute. We're talking about blood here. This is my mom and this is my daddy. And so from now on, we will all honor our parents. The only question is, will we be those parents? Got to go, y'all. Love you.